welcome back. Welcome back if you're coming to this video for another little local adventure day. <laughs> and I have to warn you, this one's nerdy. I've always been interested in the remnants of the old railroad systems here. There were a lot of railroads that kind of crisscrossed Marin and all the way up and down California. Uh, but I've never really looked into them. And today that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to track down and hunt down some of the last remaining kind of relics of the old railroad system that are hidden in plain sight. I've been driving by a lot of these things my whole life. But today I'm going to go find them and actually look at them and maybe learn a little bit about the history here and also learn about some of the current events that kind of tie into the history of the old railroad system because there is some of that going on as well. So let's get going, let's get riding. We're gonna go out to a couple spots and see what we can find, I guess. Let, let's just see what happens. So later we're actually going down there to my right into this kind of valley here to explore and talk to somebody about one of the historical places concerning the railroad down there. But first, a few other spots. We're actually not far from our first location. This is what I mean by hiding in plain sight. I've passed this place a million times and I never knew about it. The history of it concerning the railroad, I mean. A little busy. Saturday, it's busy. Oh, shoot. So the place we're going is busy too. right here okay here we are at the first location now like I said hiding in plain sight we are at King of the Roll sushi bar and Japanese cuisine a restaurant off the main road I've passed it all my life I didn't know anything about it but it has a history to it tied to the railroad this restaurant was a train station at one point this station used to be part of the North Pacific Coast Railroad the North Pacific Coast Railroad opened in 1875 and it ran from here in Marin up to Casadero in Sonoma. Uh, it carried passengers and freight, but by the 1880s, financially it was just not doing well anymore. So it was bought out and then in 1907, it became part of a larger railroad, the Northwestern Pacific Railroad, which was a much longer line that ran from here in the Bay Area all the way up through the state to the top of the state in Humboldt County. Now this became a station on that railroad when it was folded into a kind of merger of railroad companies in 1907. Northwestern Pacific was formed in 1907 and at one point there were over 60 different railroad companies that made up uh, the Northwestern Pacific line. This stop became folded into that. Now you might not notice it right away, but there is still evidence of the railroad here. And we are going to go into the alley here now, if you step into this alley and look up, boom, the Northwestern Pacific emblem is still on this building from when it was a station on the line. Now, another part back here behind the restaurant, which was also part of the train station days, is this building right here. And this was what they call a warming station, I believe. Um, I think passengers would wait in here and it was basically a little uh, waiting area at the station. So pretty cool in my opinion that this was a station and you can still kind of see remnants of it, but that's about all we can do here. <laughs> so let's go to the next spot. We're going to get going um, and we're going to now go try to find the old tracks to walk on. 
very exciting stuff. All right, I kind of know where I'm going. Let's see if we can get there. It's not that far. It's just, I have to remember the turns and be careful. Going right here, I believe. So it should be up there. Yeah. there. I just need to navigate the parking situation, which might be complicated. Definitely not supposed to go back here, I don't think. Oh, it does say parking. I just don't want to park in this main lot. It's kind of far away from the path that I'm trying to find. So let's see what we get back here. Oh, yes. Hidden? Secluded? Is this a parking lot? Oh my god, I can park right here. This is perfect. Yes. Boom. We are right next to the bay, and this is where we're going to find our old railroad tracks. Let's go try to find these tracks. They're somewhere here. There's people walking all around, but I don't think you're, I don't think anyone's walking on the railroad tracks. So I'm gonna have to do some, I don't know. We'll see. First things first. Ugh. Have to cross here. And this is definitely marsh. Okay, good, no water. We are good to go. It has to be over here somewhere. I'm just worried it's in the fenced off portion. We're definitely in marshland now, oh my god. Okay, here we go. Bam. Here's some of the tracks right here. Here you have it, the modern day use of the Northwestern Pacific Railroad track. Nice little lounge area for residents nearby. That is pretty great. So people have just kind of brought their chairs out here and that's what the railroad track is for now. <laughs> okay, so like I said before, this was part of the Northwestern Pacific Railroad, which ran all the way up to Humboldt County at the top of the state. Um, it was used primarily to transport lumber and this railroad contributed significantly to the growth of Northern California. This piece right here uh, was also featured in Dirty Harry, apparently, uh, the, the old Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, one of these bridges, I don't think it's this drawbridge up ahead, but one of, there was another bridge somewhere around here uh, that was part of the railroad that I think he jumps off in the movie. But anyway, this was one of the main railroad routes through California and like I said contributed to the growth of Northern California but the Great Depression hit it hit the railroads really hard um, there the railroad saw some bounce back in the post-World War II kind of era of building but by the 1950s uh, they started really to decline and the 60s pretty much nail in the coffin they were they were dead very cool that this is all still here I really never knew um, and I have an idea 
of how to get a closer look at the drawbridge. Okay, that was pretty cool. Back at the bike, um, we are going to ride to our last destination. We're actually meeting someone there who is going to walk us through some of the more current events surrounding some of, uh, some of this railroad. Okay, carefully getting out of this parking lot. And I think I can do it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Carefully. Here's the old movie theater that's no longer a movie theater. Chapman, Chapman. It's a little ways up. I think it's a few blocks up. I should have counted. Okay. Nope, wrong one. Let's see if Chapman's up here. <gasps> Chapman! Excellente. Okay, we're at our next spot. Well, we're not at our next spot. We're at the parking spot for the next spot, which we're going to walk into. And I'm meeting someone here. Her name's Lee. This place that we're going to is called the Alto Tunnel. Don't get too excited. It's totally boarded up. It's not much to look at. But the reason I'm going there is because there has been an effort in recent years uh, to change this kind of abandoned leftover part of the railroad system. And Lee has been involved in that. So we are going to meet up with her and go check out the front of the tunnel and she's going to talk about some of the effort that has been ongoing over the past few years. I'm Lee Larson. I live in Mill Valley and I'm a friend of Alto Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> so Lee and I are going to now try to navigate to the entrance to the tunnel. But the first thing we have to do is find our way there. So this part basically is a shortcut that connects Corte Madera to Mill Valley, right? The two towns? Yes. This is how the trains ran. This tunnel was built in 1884. And uh, this is how the trains ran from Sausalito to Eureka, right up and down this rail right of way. Whoa! Look what happened to our path. Oh my god. Oh, we might not be able to get there. Do you want to skirt over to the road? So up here you think maybe? Yeah, I think we should okay. head up. Let's try it. Okay, this is where you're going to get wet. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. You made it. It's huge, actually. I don't know why I was expecting it to be smaller. Friends of Alto Tunnel was created in 2001. Safe Route to Schools requested that the county 
look into reopening the Alto Tunnel as a safe route to school. It's flat, it's free from car traffic, um, and it connects the busiest Marin County open space path. We have these very highly used paths on both sides of this now closed tunnel that would benefit tremendously from reopening the tunnel. So the tunnel is really the critical gap in completing Marin's north-south greenway. The study in 2010 showed that it would remove 2,000 cars off the roads every day, just reopening um, this tunnel and co connecting more of our highly used paths as they are. Now the cost to reopen the tunnel is estimated at 25 million. Our next goal is to begin an environmental impact um, study. And after that is complete, there will be nothing but to seek federal and state grants to fund reopening this tunnel. All right, there you have it. That was pretty interesting, really cool uh, spots that I had really never knew existed. Uh, and really interesting to hear about what's going on currently with them too. If you've made it this far in this video and you're still watching through all this nerdy train stuff, thank you so much. I have to say the YouTube stuff, please like the video, share it, subscribe. Um, yeah, more, more little adventures to come.